we looked at how to model linear data, generate a line of best fit, and then answer some questions based on that data. Similar to that, we're going to take a look today at different types of regression that we can perform. Take a look at the graphs or use the table of values to see what kind of a shape we're going to end up with. We know the data that is a linear graph is going to form a straight line. We know data that forms the shape of a parabola is going to be a quadratic. We've got the one turning point. And we know data that forms the shape of a cubic function is going to have either two turning points or no turning points. It's just going to have a little dip de doo in the middle there. All right, similar to last time. Once we identify what type of regression is it? The calculator steps are very similar. The only difference is instead of choosing a linear regression to model, we're going to choose either a quadratic regression, which in the same menu is number five, and a, or a cubic regression, which in the same menu is number six. So to save time, if you need um, kind of a refresher on how to go through the sequence, you can go back to the previous video or look at the other notes. But we're gonna go down and take a look at the example. If you can't tell whether it's quadratic or cubic, there's a couple of hints. You can look at the number of turning points. We know a quadratic turns once, a cubic function turns zero times or two times. Take a look at the table of values and we're first going to identify what is the independent variable and what is the dependent variable. We're comparing two things. We're comparing natural gas consumption over time in the United States. So time is the independent variable. The amount of gas consumed depends on what year we happen to be in. So I'm just gonna make a little sketch and label my axes here. And then I know that my independent data goes into list one, my dependent data goes into list two. If you take a look at the years, you can see that we are increasing over time. And you have two options when you go to enter this into your calculator. You can either put in 1970, 1980, and so on, or you can say, let's put this as year zero, and then 1980 is 10 years later, 1990 is 20 years later from our starting point, and that way the number generated isn't going to be so large when we get that function, the equation of the function. Consumption now, over time, so time is increasing, take a look at what happens on the y-axis. So we're going up, and then all of a sudden we go down. We're going down, 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 and all of a sudden we go up. So my data turns two times. That tells me this is going to be a cubic function. We're gonna go back to the calculator. Before we can answer the questions, we have to generate the graph and that curve of best fit. Calculator pulled up here. Similar to last time, the first thing we're gonna do for regression is turn on our stat plot. So we're gonna go into the y equals, go up to that and press enter to highlight that box. We're gonna set the window. So we're gonna say, okay, I'm gonna to choose to enter the data as zero up to 37, just because the numbers aren't so large. So set an appropriate window. And then we're gonna go into stat. We're gonna press enter and we're gonna edit the data. So I've already done that. We're gonna then, um, you can take a look at the graph if you'd like. So there's our scatter plot graph, and we can even see at this point it is going to make a cubic shape. So we're going to go into stat, we're gonna go over to calculate, and number six is cubic regression. So I'm gonna choose number six, and then on the TI-83, we're gonna go list one, comma, list two, comma, variables, over to Y variables, and then that's gonna generate the curve of best fit. Enter, enter, enter. And not only is it giving us our equation, it's also generating that curve of best fit. There are people who say we don't need to do that VARS part and we still get the equation. You do, but you're not gonna get the curve of best fit. All right, so you may wanna write this down. The questions that we're going to do doesn't ask us to do that, but you can write it down if you choose to. If you go with the 1970, 1980, 1990 as your X values, be aware that you're gonna have the same A value, but your B, C, and D values are going to be larger. You will, however, get the same uh, values when you answer the question, so either way works. Questions we're going to answer, and you can see in both cases they're asking us to use the graph, which is why I didn't see the need to write down the equation of the function. Taking a look at our sketch, in the first question we're asked to estimate consumption. I can see consumption is my Y value. So I'm looking for what is Y when we are in the year 1992. Remember, because I chose to enter these values for X, I have to say how many years after 1970, which is our starting point, is 1992? Well, in this case, it's 22 years. 
So similar to what we did yesterday, we're going to go into graph. We're going to go second function trace. Number one allows me to put in an x value. I'm looking for when x is 22, what is the y value? And the y value happens to be at 20.100. So remember, we're working in, if you go back to the original question, we're working in um, quadrillion BTUs. So it means we have about 20.1 quadrillion BTUs. The second one wants to use the graph again to estimate when, so that's a unit of time. So I know that time is what I'm looking for, and I know my consumption is 25, and again, quadrillion. But because this is in quadrillion units, we're going to just put in the 25 for y. So I'm going to go back to y equals. We're going to go down. There's my uh, function. So I'm going to go down here. I'm going to put in y2 is 25. And again, maybe just quickly check a look at your window. We need the y maximum to be higher than that. It is in this case. Sometimes you may have to go back and adjust your window. I'm going to graph it. It's going to give me that horizontal line. And again, you're looking for where they intersect. You may need to adjust a few things. So I'm going to actually move this over. So let's try putting in 50 to get my window to scoot over a little bit and then I'm looking for that point of intersection. So there goes my curve of best fit, there goes my line. Okay, so second function trace, number five is intersection, and again move your cursor close to where those two lines intersect. Uh, yours is going to go much faster, you can actually hold yours down, my computer does not do that. Just get close, we're going to go enter, 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 and when y is 25, x happens to be 39.02. Now remember, that is 39 years after 1970, so we need to add those two together to get the year. When we do that, we can see that the year is 2009. So in the year 2009, we can expect to hit 25 quadrillion. One thing just to point out, when you see a question that says estimate, it doesn't mean just randomly guess. It means you actually do need to use that either line or curve of best fit to get the data. That is an estimate. So anytime it says estimate, we need to refer to that graph. I'm going to take a look at one of the examples in your homework. So this is on page 314, number three. I just pasted it here so you can see. First thing we do is figure out, okay, what's our independent, what's our dependent variable? Always make a quick sketch and label it. It makes answering the questions quite a bit easier when you get to that point. We're going to take a look and say, okay, our data is increasing steadily on the x-axis. On the y-axis, we're going up, up, down, down. There's one turning point, so I know it's going to be a quadratic. I turn on my stat plot. I set an appropriate window. I've already entered my data, so if we go into stat, we can take a look there. And then once I've got the data in there, I'm going to go back to stat. We're going to go over to calculate. It is a quadratic regression, so we're going to choose number five. We're going to go list one, comma, list two, comma, and then vars over to y vars, enter, enter, enter. And that produces our curve of best fit in our graph. And we know it's a quadratic, so we have a y-intercept of 11, and a is negative, so we know we're opening down. So we can go and take a look at that. Now, the other thing is, if you have a TI-84 with a window like we addressed yesterday, maybe just go back in the video, you're going to go down to store regression equation, and that's where you're going to do the VARS part. All right, so I'm, A, you can figure out. B, um, we've already got that function, that that's the equation, so just write that down before you get too far along here. And then what we're going to do after that is we're going to take a look at some of these questions here. So first thing is we're going to figure out what is the height of the ball when y is at these times. So height of the ball, go back and take a look at your sketch, that's the y. So I'm looking for y when x is, I'll start with 0. So second function trace. Number one, enter zero, and that will give you the answer. So again, remember height is in meters. So when we start, we're at the remaining ones in a similar fashion. D, when did the ball hit the ground? Again, go back to your sketch. The ball, this is uh, negative time, which is extraneous. So we want this value. We know that is our x-intercept. So I'm going to take a look here. I can't really see it. So I'm gonna go into the window, and I'm going to move my y minimum down just so that it's not crunched in the bottom of the screen there. So I'm just going to change that value and then take a look at the graph. So that's a little bit better. I could probably still go a little bit further. All right, and then similar to what you did 
for a good chunk of last year. We're going to go second function trace. We know the zeros are the x-intercepts. We're going to pick number two, and again, this is where your cursor is. We're going to move it over. So if I want this x-intercept, I need to be to the left of it. So imagine if there's a straight vertical line here. I am currently on the left. I'm going to press enter. Your calculator prompts you, are you on the right? So we're going to move over here. And I know I'm on the right when I'm below the x-axis. So just look, we want y to be negative. So even though I can't really see it, I know y is negative. I'm going to press enter. And these arrows tell you your calculator is going to guess for that value within that range. So make sure that is what we're looking for. Press enter. And there's the value. So, and again, this is a scientific notation. It's negative 1.1 times 10 to the power of negative 11, which is pretty darn close to zero. So it is going to be 5.31 seconds is when the ball hit the ground.